There are three main problems with riding in wet weather. Getting cold, getting chafed, and staying upright. So here are 10 tips which should keep you comfortable and keep you riding. Now you can wear as many layers as you like to protect yourself from the rain, but there's always going to be a trade-off. You see, you will sweat. You will. Not as much as me, perhaps, but you will. And realistically, even the very best jackets will struggle to allow moisture to escape at the rate you're producing it. So, it might be you actually end up staying more comfortable if you wear less than you wear wet weather gear. So despite getting wet from the outside, you'll get less wet from the inside. Or at the very least, you should make the most of all the venting options available to you so that you at least regulate your core body temperature. Lowering your tyre pressure puts more tyre on the road, which gives you more grip. It's as simple as that, which is pretty important on wet roads as there's a lot less grip. So it's important you make the most of your grip when you can. As we mentioned in the introduction, chafing can be a real problem when you're riding in wet conditions. And that's firstly, because damp skin can be a lot more fragile, but secondly, because the water being sprayed up from your bike can contain grit, which unfortunately can make its way quickly towards some delicate areas. So a good way to combat this is to try using some chamois cream, even if you don't have to use it under normal circumstances. It might just buy you that bit more time of staying comfortable if you're facing a long day in the saddle. The clothing market is split into two segments when it comes to wet weather gear. Traditional so-called hard shells that have got a waterproof fabric and then sealed seams, and then soft shells which are more breathable, less waterproof, but generally closer fitting. So that means that most pros use them because they stay aerodynamic. But in reality, both types of shells actually serve different purposes. For longer, steadier days out on the bike, a hard shell is going to keep you drier and therefore warmer, but on shorter, harder rides, a soft shell is definitely better because it's more breathable and then it also doesn't flap around. Another great way of staying warmer on wet days is a very simple one. That is just to ride harder. Now, it can be difficult to do if you've got a very specific session in mind. There's absolutely no doubt that it is effective at doing the job. However, what you might find is that in order to do this, you need to steer clear of roads which don't allow you to put that effort in. So I'm thinking predominantly of long descent. So on wet days, try and ride on predominantly flat roads. You'll be able to put the effort in all the way around. You'll have the added bonus and your brake blocks will last longer. It's one of the best value accessories you can buy. The humble casquette is also one of the most effective. Now it might only be made from cotton, but it'll insulate your head in wet conditions and the peak will also keep some of the spray out of your eyes. Overshoes are great. Now, they won't keep your feet totally dry, but they will do a pretty good job on a shorter ride. And of course, the thicker pairs will keep your feet nice and toasty and warm. But it's also worth mentioning, they're a good idea to wear just when it's wet, even though it could be warm outside, as they'll keep your expensive box fresh cycling shoes in tip-top mint condition before you pop your overshoes in the washing machine. Unless you're running disc brakes, you're going to have to face the harsh reality that your braking is going to be dramatically affected. And even if you have got disc brakes on, it's going to take you longer to slow down. And of course, your grip is going to be dramatically affected on corners. But there is a way to remedy this to a degree, and that is to make sure you brake in good time before the corners. Now, braking before corners is something we always mention, but in the wet, definitely back off that little bit more, because the last thing you want to do is grab some brakes midway through the corner because you're going to really increase the risk of wiping out and crashing. So remember, brake in the wet a long time before the corner. As we mentioned earlier, traction on wet roads is at a premium and some services are worse than others. So debris on the road is a really obvious one. White lines, slightly less so. Now these white painted lines in some countries 
can be absolutely lethal, offering little or no grip at all. Maybe it's a different type of paint or something. Whatever it is, it's a good idea to avoid them, especially when you're braking, cornering, or you've got power coming out of your ears like Matt when you're accelerating. Keeping your hands warm when it's raining can be particularly tricky when the temperature starts to drop. Now you can get fully waterproof gloves, but in our experience, they don't particularly work. And your hands still get damp and cold. So the alternative is to try neoprene gloves, neoprene being the same material used for wetsuits. It doesn't keep the water out, rather it traps a layer inside the glove next to your skin where it gets nice and warm. So there we go. 10 ways to keep you more comfortable and upright in the rain. Now, if you want a bit more information about how to corner in wet weather, we've got a video about that. You can get to it just by clicking up there. Yeah, and if you'd like to see our tips on winter clothing for cycling, you can see that just down here. And to subscribe to GCN, click on my sogginess. Because, I, to, actually, to be honest, I can't believe no, it. We're I'm not, in the rain, no, I was going to say, my, my tip about riding hard was no, the best. We and we stood still. Yeah, let's go. Uh,